Hi, I'm Trevor Burnett, and I'm a cocktail enthusiast. I make a lot of really great cocktails. One of my favorite cocktails is the Mai Tai, and we're going to be making the Mai Tai in some really great customized, let's say, vessels. Vessels meaning, you know, containers, and they're made of bamboo. What's really cool about bamboo is that it comes on a very long, it's basically a big log stick, and it's divided by knuckles. And the knuckles, uh, basically, if you cut underneath the knuckles, you can create uh, a cup out of them. So this is the bamboo stick right here. You can see that's a knuckle. And what we've done is we've cut the bottoms off, just like so. And we've engraved them with these really great uh, tiki uh, fonts, as well as tiki icons. And they make really great glasses for a terrific tiki party. And today we're going to be teaching the Mai Tai. So my favorite part of this process is obviously the customization, but specifically this Troglass swizzle stick made of Troglass acrylic, all right? And these are a terrific way to kind of put that little bit of detail into your cocktails that you can't necessarily do with, let's just say, a mint garnish or a lime. These are great. You can take a moment at the end of your drinking night and uh, yeah, they're, ter they're a great touch. So the essential part of a Mai Tai is the ice. A lot of people don't realize how important ice is to a really great cocktail, and each cocktail needs a specific style of ice. The Mai Tai is tropical. Usually I like to revert to the old standard crushed ice. I crush it myself. You get yourself a nice Lewis bag, just like so, and you fill it with a little bit of your standard ice. Great part about a crushed ice cocktail is you can make it anywhere. Basically, if you have really useless kind of crappy ice, you can pulverize it into just the best stuff anywhere. You can use anything from a wooden mallet to a rubber mallet. Maybe if you don't have those things, you can also grab a pot from your kitchen and just pulverize the hell out of your ice and get all that aggravation out of you as well. All right, so now we have our crushed ice. You can add this to the shaker. I like to start with the alcohol first at times because I want to make sure that it's in there. Some people like to leave it to the end because if you screw up the drink in the beginning, you haven't lost your precious, you know, rum or gin or vodka or whatever you're mixing with. But in this case, I don't want to forget, so I'm going to add, I have a couple of options here. You can use a white rum, an aged rum, and an amber rum. Today I'm going to use El Dorado Silver. This is a six-year-old rum. So a really great Mai Tai will be made from usually about two, sometimes even three styles of rum. It all depends. If you check the recipes, everyone's kind of different, but I'm going to stick to using two out of the three that I brought with me. This is an Eldorado six-year-old silver. Use one ounce. Five here, another ounce, and the next spirit we're going to add is a little Cointreau. If you stay authentic, you can use something called dry curacao, but it's not always available. So something that you're always going to find is Cointreau, a fine orange flavor liqueur. About half ounce of Cointreau will do the job. Next, we have a syrup called Orjat. Sometimes you'll hear it called Orzata. Orjat is a syrup that you can find recipes for online, often used in tiki cocktails. It's made by blanching and sweetening almonds, right? So you add sugar, you add water, you basically boil them for a number of, it's kind of a long process. Do yourself a favor and just buy it online or you know, pick it up at your local cocktail emporium. About a quarter ounce of that, right there. And next, just a little hint of simple syrup. That's a one-to-one -one ratio, sugar to water. 
boil that until the crystals kind of turn into liquid. And then you're good to go. You can sweeten your daiquiris with that, whatever you want. So we've added the sweet. Now we want to counter it with a little bit of sour. Almost like making a limeade. So I've got my fresh limes. I'm just going to squeeze them in there like so. One lime will probably suffice. And two. There you go. Super. And I save the shells. Sometimes you want to use that as a garnish too. And then we're ready to shake. We have enough for two, Ashley. Okay. Super. So we have enough for two Mai Tais. This is great because Mai Tai is actually translates to good drink or great drink. And uh, it's always important to have someone to be drinking with when you're having cocktails. It's essential for me. I don't like drinking alone. You know I mean? um, so, perfect. Garnish is also important. These are mint sprigs that I picked from my garden this morning. Put that in there. Mint is a great way to express the freshness in your beverage. Give it a little spanking, just like that. This is where those really cool uh, Maori stir sticks come in, all right? Now, what's beautiful about these is they're bold, they stand out, and they really make people say, Oh, what's that person having? I want one of those. And it happens all the time. And of course, you know, this isn't me. Well, it kind of is. But when I go to a tiki bar, I always kind of like, I have the old sticky fingers. I like to leave with something. And this is a great way to leave with something, a souvenir of your, your evening. Here's another one. That one's great. And then we also have one that's great. It says, time for a Mai Tai. And any time is a good time for a Mai Tai, in my opinion. Stick that guy in there too. Now, the last thing I'll add here is my straw. Straws are very important. You wanna put that right where the mint is because then you'll get a nice big burst of mint, minty goodness. Those aromatics, boom. Hit you right in the old olfactory system. And then you're done. Cheers and aloha.